Hello and welcome to part 8 of Porting the Elemental Shields to Sonic 1. So in this part we're going to be addressing a bunch of little bugs and oversights that have accumulated over the past 7 parts. Now there is presumably one more part after this where I'm going to go through the game, play, test it and find issues myself. But for now we're just going to address these because I feel they might keep us occupied for a little bit. <laughs> okay so we have 6 issues. Some might, ah, well, yeah, some are more annoying than others, but I think for now, let's start with the fire shield. Actually, there's one more issue. I don't know how the fire shield is meant to make the camera lag behind. Yeah, let, let's see if we can address that in this part too. So, let's, let's start with the fire shield speed cap. So when you get the fire shield, and you start dashing around, Sonic 1's speed cap or air speed cap, which was removed in Sonic 2 and 3. No, it's removed in Sonic 3, kept in Sonic 2. It it limits your speed, which kind of ruins the fire shield. It's meant to make you go quick, and well, it doesn't make you go quick because of the speed cap. The speed cap only applies if you're holding left or right on the D-pad. If you're not touching the D-pad at all and you do a flame dash, you will actually just go full speed as normal. And that is really annoying. So the solution is going to be a little tricky and hacky. Because really, what are we going to do? We either remove the speed cap and make it make the game kind of you know, inaccurate to Sonic 1. I know I'm porting the elemental shields, but yeah, you know, I'm trying not to change other things. It's not like we're it's not like I'm adding the spin dash or anything. I just want to add the elemental shields to Sonic 1. I could make it so the speed cap does not apply if you have the fire shield. That's better, but still. It would be better if the speed cap didn't apply while you were doing the flame dash. Perhaps make it so the speed cap does not apply if... Where is it? Oh, it's not in here. If... The double jump flag is set. Like, yeah, check if Sonic has a fire shield and if he's double jumping. Then do not apply the air speed cap. I think that is a good compromise, because you, you keep Sonic 1's speed limit, which is a part of how Sonic 1 works, the levels were built around the fact that you can only go quick if you either let a, you know, flew off a ramp without holding left and right, or if you like rolled. Anyway, so let's just uh, let's spawn a fire shield so we can test this out. Now, where is the speed cap? Let's just look at the listing file. I cannot be bothered to figure this out myself. Okay. This is going to take a while to find, you know. Let's start with Sonic Move. Yep, that's a real function. Okay. Okay, well, I think this is the code we're looking for, right here. I imagine D5 is inertia? No, no. Sonic's acceleration value. D6 is his speed limit. And yeah, if it's lower than, then branch, otherwise cap it at that value. We need a check, like the one Sonic 2 adds, where it checks, is Sonic somehow already above the speed limit? You see what it does here? is it assumes, well no, how do I put this, first it adds Sonic's acceleration data to his current inertia, then it checks. The idea is, in theory, what this is meant to do is catch Sonic the moment he breaks his speed limit and then cap him. But as Sonic 2 goes to show, apparently that's not what the devs intended, or maybe it was. I'm contradicting myself, but my point is, in theory, theory, this uh, isn't meant to catch Sonic 
if he's somehow already above the limit, because by the logic of this code, Sonic would never, without adding dfav to d0, already be above the speed limit, because this will prevent from ever reaching it. So how can Sonic possibly go above his own speed limit? Simple, if he rolled down a hill, because he's not moving by his own speed, he's moving because of his x veil or whatever. Either way, he isn't moving because he's running or holding left or right on the D-pad. If I, if I understand right, this code doesn't run if you're not holding right on the D-pad. So the speed cap never kicks in unless you start holding on the D-pad. So in Sonic 1, it is possible to break Sonic's speed limit as long as you're not holding left and right on the D-pad and there are ways to do it. This is what creates that annoying thing where you can hit like a red spring in Sonic 2 and it'll launch you really far and fast. But if you hold right the direction you're going, you'll slow down somehow. So now if we check this same code in Sonic 2, you can see the edit they made. So let's go to GitHub, and we're going to look at the Sonic 2 disassembly. So Sonic, yeah, here we go. And it's going to be in, mm, yeah, s2.asm. Here we go. As you can see, the code is different. Oh, come on now. Yeah. So it adds the acceleration to D0, does a comparison. But yeah, and as you can see, it subtracts the acceleration, does another comparison, and skips the cap if you're already greater than the maximum. Now, honestly, this structure bothers me. Now, why is it laid out that way? I'm just thinking, if I were to do this, I would have done it differently. Hmm. Like, you, you add the acceleration, then check if you're already above the limit, right? Why not, like, right here? Why not just here? Check if you're above the limit, and then skip if you are. Why does it... Check if he's above, or just gone above the limit then undo it and check if he's above the limit. I'm, I'm, more, I'm more there might be like a, a weird edge case I could be opening myself up to, but that really does look like a really bad hack job. Why is it done that way? It's slower because you have to do a subtraction and it's inefficient because by the time you've realized, oh, we don't have to do this, you've already done all of this logic. So, okay, well, I'm going to do this my way. <laughs> of course it's not in here. Good golly. But of course, this is for walking and running. What is Sonic not doing when he's in the air? Walking or running? Heck, even when he's in the air, just because he's playing the walk animation doesn't mean he isn't in the air. So we need... Well, quick history lesson. Sonic 2 removes the speed cap, yet there's still a speed limit if you're in the air. Either Sonic Team deliberately left it in, or they didn't realise there's actually two copies of this code. One for when you're on the floor, the other for when you're in the air. So maybe jump direction does it. Here we go. Add speed limit, check if you're above the speed limit, skip if you are, or are, whatever. So this is what we need. This is for left, this is for right. We need to add more logic. Subtract, move, negate. Okay, I, I get that. Let's just do that up here. But again, we only need to do this if Sonic has a fire shield and he's double jumping. Let's just start with removing the speed cap. We can worry about the other logic next. So...
if Sonic is above the speed cap, by default, branch, then subtract our, okay, we need the opposite, what's great, what's the opposite of greater than, I believe it's, yeah, lower than or equal, it's assigned branch, and okay, that, that should do it, let me do it again for right, And for that, we need greater than or equal. So let's do a quick test. And see if now there is no airspeed cap. At all. Actually, I should... I think I've been describing this wrong. The point of this is to limit Sonic's acceleration. If you are on a straight, flat level, and you just held right, Sonic should not keep accumulating speed until he reaches freaking light speed. The point isn't to give Sonic a speed limit as much as it is to stop Sonic from having infinite acceleration. If you get what I mean. I don't know, I guess it's a topic for another time, but... Anyway, up to the fire shield. Okay, well before, before I can even get the fire shield, we've got a bit of a problem. Uh, check this out. Yeah, I, I appear to have broken Sonic. Okay, what the hell did I do wrong? If he's already above the limit branch, so it doesn't... Oh, 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 shoot. That explains why Sonic 2 did it that way. I'm not adding Sonic's acceleration at all. Uh, that, that explains a lot. Oh, does it? Because it undoes it, right? It adds. Subtracts. Branch. What the hell? Okay, how does that work? Because now we're putting D0 back, but without the acceleration added to it. Is this a bug? Like, Sonic Team, what are you doing? Alright, whatever. If it's vanilla behaviour, I suppose. Even if it is objectively wrong behaviour. Jeez. I get. I must be wrong. I must be misunderstanding this code, because why is it doing that? Right, add compare branch. Subtract compare branch. I suppose the issue was also that I I did a comparison before negating D1, that probably was an issue. Oh goodness me, what is <laughs> what what's happening? Okay, now I'm just seeing more problems. Like that would explain why it's subtracting D0. Yeah, like if you're already over the speed limit. Don't add more acceleration, so my method was correct, god damn it. Welcome to programming. Okay, so all I have to do is take the neg instruction, put it here. Do not add acceleration if you're already over the speed limit and you add it there. Okay, I think it's correct now. Let's go get the fire shield. Hang on a tick, I saw that. Well, 
That sucks. Remember how in the last part was porting the sound effects? Yeah. SMPS 2SM noticed another problem. The FM voices are literally incompatible with Sonic 1 and 2's drivers. So while they do sound mostly correct, they're not completely correct, and they probably will never be. So let's stick that on the to-do list. This is well out of scope. Well, not out of scope, but way out of the way. But yeah, I know SMPS. I know what this means. I know what causes it, and I know how to fix it. It's just very gross and uh, very involved. So, uh, shield SFX TL bits. Yeah, we're going to be fixing things for a while, aren't we? Like we've, we've done what twenty minutes solving this one problem. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's really that sucks. All right, see you when I get a fire shield. Yeah, there is no longer a speed an air speed limit. There's a speed limit on the ground because something else how Sonic slows down when he touches the floor. At least I think he is. Anyway, yeah, that is the air speed <coughs> air speed cap removed. But we only want to remove the cap again when Sonic has a fire shield and he's air dashing. So let's find the relevant code for that. Here we go. So we only want to run this check, this bit of code, yeah, if these conditions are true. So we need, we're essentially creating a big ugly uh, if else thing that you'd see in higher level languages. B shield type. So it does sound like have a fire shield, if not branch. Okay. So you want to branch to after this code, but before the subtraction. Now we're going to tst.b v player plus double jump flag. Don't need that one. Does is Sonic double jump in? If not branch. Now I'll do it. So now we come here, no, here. So what this is saying is, if Sonic has a fire shield, and he's double jumping, and Sonic's going above the air speed cap, do not apply the speed cap. That way, we've preserved Sonic 1's speed cap, but it will not affect the fire shield. Which I think is desirable behaviour. You know, in Sonic 3 there is no speed cap, so the fire shield was presumably built around the fact that Sonic does not get limited while he's moving around in the air. As for the bubble shield and electric shield, all they do is make you go up and down and there is no up and down speed limit. So those work fine. Anyway, see when I get a f yeah, when I get the fire shield. Yep, there's no speed limit when I'm jumping around. But now let's see. I think right here I can test the air speed limit. So I'm just going to go real quick and I'm going to stop him in midair almost. Okay, that was not as good as I was hoping for. Um, I think I'm going to try out in Spring Yard. No, Starlight. Okay, hopefully this is the right level. The one that starts with a big ramp. So in theory, if I go down this ramp and I jump and I hold right, Sonic will slow down. And that will show the air speed cap is intact. So here we go. Yeah, there we go. So the air speed cap is intact. It's only disabled when you're doing the flame dash. Okay, so let's go back to our to-do list. That is issue one done. All right, so next up, the Sonic 2 DMA check on boot. This one's kind of tricky to explain. You see, on the Mega Drive, you can do a hard reset, where you turn the console off and back on, and a soft reset. And if I remember right, all a soft reset does is uh, it restarts the CPU. So the game will not load graphics the normal way, because the CPU handles it. But with our, with our hack, 
the CPU doesn't load all the graphics, does it? No. The way DMAs work is the GPU, or the VDP, handles loading. So if you hit soft reset, even when the game is trying to start up again, the game is technically, potentially, still loading graphics. And that can be an issue. I've never really seen it be an issue, but this is something the devs figured out or noticed in Sonic 2. So if we scroll down, because the, the, you know, the earliest code is the code ran by the CPU. We just come down here past the data table. Here we go. The second version of Sonic 2 added a check to force the game to wait if a DMA is under you know, in progress. So we're going to backport this to Sonic 1. Because presumably, this in the first version of Sonic 2 is a bug. Again, I've never seen the bug like manifest before. But in theory, it, it could happen, I think. So yeah, we're just going to play it safe. Ah, right. Doing this a little bit wrong. There we go. Okay, and that is the DMA check on start fixed. Next up is Sonic 2's DMA reset. Now you might remember back in part, what, 3? When I added the DMA queue? I actually did remember this, and I was thinking, why, why do I remember this? Where does the game do it? Because I couldn't find any code for it. You see, in Flamewing's DMA queue, there's code for initialising it, and there's code for adding to the queue, and there's code for running the queue, but there was no code for resetting the queue. The reason there isn't is because you're expected to do it manually, which Sonic 2 does. So if we look up, what is its name? Let's just look up the word queue, and we'll probably find it. Here we go, VDP command buffer. This is the RAM buffer for the DMA queue. So we're still in the DMA code, we're still in the DMA code, but again, resetting the DMA queue is done manually. So the DMA queue code doesn't handle it. Look, right here, we, um, Sonic 2 clears the first bit of the buffer, then sets that very first bit of the buffer as the current buffer slot. So when the DMA queue is processed, it'll check, okay, where are we? Oh, it's empty. It does that to, again, prevent DMA transfers from occurring when they're not meant to. This, in effect, cancels all currently pending DMA queues. And as you can see, it does it during the level initialization code. Does it do it anywhere else? It does it on... What the hell is this? All right, when you enter the special stage. And it does it in the two-player results menu. Oh, and it also does it in the yeah, in like the options menu and the level select. And that's it. So, let's backtrack. Where does it tend to do it? Is there like a common trend? It seems to do whatever the hell it feels like. But it tends to be after this weird H hint code. Alright, well, I think the order isn't actually that important, but yeah. However, there is a difference. Again, this is for Sonic 2's DMA queue, and Flamewing's DMA queue is different. But for slot is only a word, not a long word. So that has to be changed to W. Now, if I remember right, there are actually uh, bugs in Sonic 2 stemming from the fact it doesn't do this enough. There are a few areas it should do this, and it doesn't. And you know, sitting here thinking about it, I'm really paranoid. Let's check Ultra DMA Q again. Because I believe the installation guide does actually tell you about it, and this information might be useful for the hack. So, yeah. Oh, there's a macro for it. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I'm an idiot. Here we go. Look at that. In the special stage code, add this line above the above block, and this is a broken clear. Okay, really? Didn't we literally just find this code in the special stage code? Right, this is level, and this is special stage. Okay, so that's a bug, kind of. Huh. Like clear RAM miscellaneous variables. Above the whole block. Okay, that's really weird. But basically, the issue isn't that Sonic 2 forgets to clear it, apparently, it just does it way too late. It shouldn't be down here. It should be somewhere up up here. And the thing is, this actually, it's not quite a bug in Sonic 2, but if you were to add Flame Wings DMAQ to Sonic 2, this would cause the game to bug out or crash. Because, well, <laughs> the official code, it, it clears the buffer, it resets it, but it does it too late. Why doesn't Sonic 2 blow up? Because this right here accidentally clears it. Because as you can see, it clears four bytes too many. So it clears the start of the buffer. But with Flame Wings Q, the buffer is like a different layout. So clearing it won't clear it. Not this way, anyway. Causing the game to bug out and be weird. Which is why the installation instructions say add another reset somewhere else and also fix the buggy clear basically right after misc variables is um yeah the vdp command buffer so i guess the, the placement is pretty important oh well we can just copy what sonic one uh, sonic two does and not really question much of it so let's take a look at the various uh, game modes sonic one has because it, it, it does have a special stage but it doesn't really have any menus, at least not of that type. And we also have to keep in mind, our hack only uses DMAs during the level. So maybe we should only concern ourselves with the level mode. So yeah, you have level, special stage, two player results, and the menu. So we don't have a menu, we don't have a two player special stage, uh, two player result. We do have a special stage and we do have a level. So I suppose we'll just apply them to these. So, game mode level. Where does Sonic 2 do this? Okay. What flag hitching enabled? That seems like a good area to do it. Something distinct. Here we go. Enable hitching. Does the level have water? Of course, in Sonic 1 that's different because we just it's just hard-coded. We have the H-blank register, which is, yeah, h encounter reserve in Sonic 2. And we're just going to replace that with the macro supplied with the Ultra DMA queue. Now the special stage one isn't as transferable because uh, the special stage is totally different in Sonic 2. We're just going to have to guesstimate it ourselves. So let's just try putting after this this same blob of code. You know, it disable interrupts, clear screen, a bunch of VDP logic. Okay, disable it's VDP logic. Some logic. Uh, hmm. Disable, enable, disable, enables all the way down here. Okay. Well, 
Although now, wait, hang on. <laughs> Just making sure. So clear screen is here. Where's that thing that clears the screen? Or disables it? That's weird. It's just I'm pretty sure what this does is it turns the screen off. And I'm wondering whether I should do it before or after. I guess I'm just going to gamble and put it here. Okay, well, assuming the game doesn't explode, then we've, we've solved the issue. DMA Q. Or queued DMA events will not leak outside of their levels. That should be good enough. Game doesn't explode. Presumably the DMA queue is still functioning. Let's uh, let's grab an invincibility that uses the DMA queue. Yep, yeah, that's still working. All right, well I think we can take that issue off. So DMA resets done. Bubble bouncing on springs is broken. All right, well I'm going to enable the lightning bubble shield and see if that's true. Okay, see you then. Okay, now, uh, where, where can I find a spring? I know there are springs up in trees somewhere, so I suppose I'll look for them. Oh, look, a spring. All right, cool. I don't remember quite what the comment said, but something should be wrong here. I mean... Oh! <laughs> hmm. I mean, it does look a little goofy. I suppose the only solution is to check Sonic 3 and see if it does the same thing there. Alright, well, in Sonic 3 I have a fire shield, let's see how this thing works. Let's start with bouncing on, uh, bouncing on an enemy. See if it gives me a second bounce afterwards. Shoot. Oh, come on, reload already. Alright, hold still. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's not a bug. That's good to know. Now let's find a spring. This could take a while. Alright, here's a spring. Okay, yeah. So if I hit the spring, I cannot do another bubble bounce. So that commenter does appear to be right, assuming that was the bug they were talking about. Alright, well, let's see how the game does it, huh? Okay, so I found the spring object. If you come down and follow the code, horizontal, down, up, down, up. You find it sets itself to OBJ spring up, and then it errors to player 1 and 2, checks if they're touching it, I guess, and run this code. So this code runs when you get sprang. So what does it do? A1 must be the character, A0 is the spring. Now, I'm gonna have to go back into the constants file and figure out what all the he what all of this uh, all of this is. Like what? Two A is status. Shield reaction is irrelevant. We do need to do that at some point. I should have that to the to-do list. Type today. Wow. Okay, where's double jump? Double jump is 20. No, that's irrelevant. Double jump is 2F. 
does 2f get cleared? It doesn't look like it. Alright, well, we'll see you when I figure this out. Okay, I found the issue. I started documenting the code and I realised it actually clears Sonic's jumping flag. Maybe it doesn't do that in Sonic 1. Anyway, I'm going to finish uh, just figuring out what these, equa these SSTs are and I'll be back. Okay, so I went through the code and uh, there's nothing special. So we're going to pop over to the Sonic 1 spring object and see if it clears Sonic's jumping flag. Well, we're here and uh, as you can see it does not appear to clear Sonic's jumping flag. So let's do a quick comparison between this and the way bigger <laughs> Sonic 3 code. So it does add A to Sonic's position, it also changes the spring's animation, it sets his velocity, sets 1 clears 3, So it's Sonic Animation, his Routine, and, uh, yeah, Animation and Routine. Yep, Anim and Routine right here. So this is from Sonic 2. This might also be from Sonic 2. If you have a port, the Spin Dash, you should probably make sure to add this line over. But yeah, yeah, that's not what we're here for. And that should fix our issue. But what is the jumping flag again? Is that 30? Oh, is it 3C? Hmm. I just really want to be sure that that's correct. Let's see, jump height, so... Insta and... Yes, that's definitely his jumping flag. Okay, so... Clear the jumping flag, and let's bounce on a spring and see if we can bounce afterwards. Okay, three, two, one. Yeah, and you cannot spring again afterwards. Great. Right, that's that bug fixed. Suppose I should also just get rid of this one because it's not relevant. Okay, leaves camera lag. Uh, so two missing features. Whoopsie daisy. A limitation and a weird bug thing. Okay, well the roll jump thing should be easy enough. Basically in Sonic 3 if you did the insta shield during a roll jump it would disable the roll jump. But there isn't an insta shield in this port so for whatever reason jump in and then pressing the jump button again while doing a roll jump will disable the roll jump. This isn't really desirable behaviour so we're changing it. Now, we're going to make it so... Hmm... Yeah. I think we'll just duplicate the logic. So whenever a shield ability is activated, it will clear the roll jump flag. That way, when Sonic just double jumps without a shield while roll jumping, it will not disable the roll jump behaviour. Alright, that's another issue sorted. These last three are pretty big and annoying and I don't like him because while well, this is well they're all pretty involved for this one we're going to, going to have to modify not just the sound engine but SMPS to ASM so it doesn't give us those warnings and it properly converts the FM sounds this requires us either introducing or finding an equivalent to Sonic 2's camera lag setup and shield react, or should I say shields making you immune to things. That's not how you spell immune, is it? Yeah, that's going to require creating a little database of every single object in the game and just saying whether the fire shield makes you immune to it or the electric shield or yeah, and so on. And that's gonna require a bit of playtesting, I think, but eh, we'll see. But which one to begin with, huh? I mean, I suppose the camera lag. 
Yeah, I guess we'll start with that. Okay, so I did a little looking around. Okay, well, so in the fire dash code, it sets H scroll frame offset to whatever, and it calls reset player position. This function doesn't exist in Sonic 2. Sonic 2 does it manually every single time. What it does is it takes, well, there are two things tracking Sonic. There's an array that tracks what his positions, his X and Y coordinates, and there's a table that records, I believe, just his status byte. In Sonic 3, it was expanded to also track his art tile. Now, in Sonic 1, there is a buffer for tracking Sonic's position, but not his status. Now, in Sonic 1, the position tracking buffer is used by the invincibility stars, and that's it. Yeah, and that's it. In Sonic 2, I imagine the status table was added for, for tails. So tails can tell when you're jumping, when you're pushing, when you're underwater, that kind of thing. But Sonic 1 doesn't have that. As for why the tracking data gets reset, I think maybe the, uh, I think that has to do with, with this. I think in Sonic 2, the camera uses your position data too. And so by setting an offset, it'll look at your old coordinates, which get reset to your current coordinate, in effect making the camera just sit there for a couple of seconds. But this H-scroll thing, I'm pretty sure it does not exist in Sonic 1. But we're not going to compare Sonic 3 to Sonic 1, we're going to look at Sonic 2. So I'm going to quickly download this disassembly and start searching through it. We look at it go. All right, finally. To be honest, I'm not totally sure where to start looking. I suppose we'll start in this constants file where we keep the RAM. Must be pretty far down. Come on. Here we go. So here we have uh, trunk table, block table. Hmm. Here we go. Sonic stat rec recording, Sonic position recording. So let's look through the code and see what uses this position record. Okay, we're looking through the whole game. This is the most telltale one. Deform BG layer. Um, I think that's a misnomer. Either way, the record, uh, yeah, the buffer is put into A6, then we call scroll horrors. Now we're getting deep into the game's level drawing system. It is very complicated, and honestly, I'm scared to go near it. So, yeah, this is pretty worrying, honestly. This is going to be one hell of a feature port. Like, I'm not even familiar with Sonic 1's rendering system and how different it is, or what the heck the name for that is. Really? Oh man. So yeah, stay tuned for live code exploration action. Okay, so it's called by the level main loop. Yeah, okay, so let's go back to Sonic 1 and look at GM level and try and find the equivalent function. Oh, sorry, it's level main loop, not the initialization. Here we go. Level inactive flag. Deform layers. Okay. Oh, for flipping heck. Okay, deform layers, the code was heavily modified between the two versions of Sonic 1. We're using the second version, so we're going to look at that version's code. It's starting to look similar, isn't it? So you can see it's quite a bit different, because it's trying to accommodate for, like, I guess, two-player. Scroll horrors. 
I guess, yeah, I guess it doesn't work vertically. Hmm, now that I think about it. So, oh, you mean I could just, I could have just done this the whole time. God damn it. Oh boy. Yeah, looking kind of different, ain't it? Wow. Wow, where where do I begin? So you get the camera X pause, that looks normal. This doesn't look normal. Teleport flag. Hey, what? Okay, we don't care about that. Should scrolling be delayed? Let me guess, that's the delay integer, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. Horrors scroll delay val. Scroll not delayed. We come down here. Okay, we get the X pause of the player. No? Okay, I <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Okay, hang on, hang on a sec. Yeah, there is no BSR, so I suppose we need to come here. Okay, so we take the player's x coordinate, subtract the screen coordinate from it, subtract 144, which is that. BLT, that's just a different name for it, subtract 16. Yeah, I think it's pretty visible what we've found. Okay, so there's. Uh, <laughs> ooh. Okay, okay. I think we can get away with inserting our new code here. So as you can see, it's just extra code bolted on top. So we should be okay to port this. It's not that complex. It's merely aliasing the player's x coordinate for an outdated one from the position buffer. And once we reach here, it's business as normal. So... Let's start with this. Just D4 is... What, you're not going to highlight it for me? Am I going... No. What, what the hell is D4 used for? Whatever. Alright, so we come here. This is going to be long and arduous, isn't it? Let's come to jump height. We're going to just... Yeah, yeah whatever. So all A5s will be replaced with... Because we, yeah, we don't have two player. We don't need to use reference registers. We can just do it all manually. So I'm sorry, is it always A5? Yeah, it is. Get current position buffer index that can't be good that, ooh, that really can't be good i like this disassembly and all because it's really clear oh wait no this is sonic 3 code isn't it no it's sonic 2 code what am i talking about oh boy horrors Wow, that is... Huh. So when it does 2A5, it's actually referencing this variable. Same for tails. So in theory, this should be documented a little better. Or at the very least, there should be like some checks to make sure these are never apart. Bloody hell. Oh, okay. Scroll, pause, record index. That exists in Sonic 1. Somewhere. Let me get the listing file. Where, where did I put it? There it is. Okay. So if we come to track Sonic, there, track pause, come here. Tracking position reference number. Yep, 
yeah, as you can see, so Sonic 1, uh-huh, Sonic 2, uh-huh. So these are one and the same. So we want track pause. We're going to come back here to our camera code. Instead of doing that, we're going to do this. Because what a weird roundabout way to do it. I mean, yeah, it saves registers, but damn, is that prone to error? Okay. And now all we need is A6, which is... This. Now, how do I how do I do this again? I think I'm just gonna have to load it into a register. Are there any trashed registers I can use? No. Hmm. It's just if I load this to A6, what if something is using A6 elsewhere and they changed it for Sonic Three? I'd prefer to do something different. Guess I have no choice. Okay. I really do not want to start touching address registers. You know, in assembly, there's really no way to tell what registers are and aren't being used. I just don't want to introduce a cryptic, weird bug to debug later. Like, is there anything? Anything I can go by? Okay, um, I guess I'm free to do whatever I want. Nothing seems to be used in any of the registers. Yeah, let's go with AO. It's a pretty common address register. So, get the position. And uh, use that for scrolling. Uh-huh. Scroll not delayed. Okay, and I think just like that I have added the scroll delay. Now I need to find some free RAM. Allocate the room for it. Now where did I put those other things like the shield? Let's see. Shield type. So we should have spare bytes around here. Or not? Shield type, shield invincibility 2A, it's 1 byte. 4 bytes. Okay, am I crazy? Let's just look it up again. Some mini hacking guide. Uh, not quite what I'm looking for, but it'll do. Sonic 1. RAM editing. And let's find us some free RAM. <sighs> well, I want it to be something near this. 788. Maybe there's some free RAM here. Okay, Sonic's recorded position arrays counter. Alright, we have some right here. A2, A3. 7, A2. Okay. Now, is there anything else I need? I know I need to port um, this function. We'll get to it. But what does Sonic 2 do? Because remember, just because we've added the variable doesn't mean we're finished with it. We need to find out where the game goes through and changes this thing. Okay, so it's red. Red, red. That's just the, tele the swap monitor. This... Ah, it's for the spin dash. So if you port the spin dash to Sonic 1, it will conflict with the changes we're making here because that spin dash guide will tell you to do what I just did, but different. So 
Yeah, good luck with that. I don't care. Did we wrap back around to the... Oh! It is only used for the spin dash, and it's never cleared. Alright, that's, that's good. We can work with that. So... All that's left now is to port this function. Reset player position array. Now if we take a look at Sonic 3... Yeah... We don't need any of this, this is two player. Do not need two player code, the code can end here. We do not have a stat table, so we can remove that logic. Pause table index, right. Okay, I'm away. Okay, that, that hopefully, hopefully, did it. So we're going to spawn a fire shield and see if the camera now has a delay. But first, let's see if it even builds. Chances are it won't. Ah, okay. All of our extra code has pushed a few, a lot of things around. Jeez. Really? Ah, whatever. Okay. Sonic level bound dot ASM. Again, uh, we can't extend the range of these branches, they're too big. So, we'll just add a little uh, a trampoline, I think you call it. I'm not sure. We call them jump twos. Please, please fix the issue. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, the, the syntax for these local branches and labels, yeah, it's, it's pretty annoying. Alright, here we go. So, see you when I get a fire shield. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh good, I beat the level. <laughs> okay, there is a massive problem here. Oh, I lost my fire shield. Okay. I was hoping to do that again. Oh jeez, what could I have done wrong? Hmm. I don't see anything obviously wrong, you know. Take the scroll frame offset thingamajiggly. Branch if it's not needed, so you know, decrement it, then take it, transform it into an offset, apply it. No, I'm I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing where I could be going wrong. AO is indeed Sonic. 3F. Okay. Hang on, hang on a tick. I'm trying, to, trying to figure out what that number actually is. Yeah, I'll just use the Sonic 2 version, Sonic. Okay, I'm doing this wrong. Anyway. 
Yeah, that's still only a hundred bytes. What's going on here? Hmm. This is going to be a pain in the ass to debug, you know. Okay, I found the issue. I'm an idiot. Gosh, diddly damn. That was silly. Okay, again, see when I get a fire shield. Alright, here we are. Please don't break this time. Yeah! Got it! The fire shield is working fully? Well, besides immunity. We'll get to that. Awesome. One more thing to take off the list. Okay, that leaves sound effects and immunity. Oh, God. Um... Ugh, shield immunity is really bloody annoying. Because it's just, it's not something you can do in one fell swoop. Essentially, I mean, hang on, I'm looking for the object pointer table. Here we go. So we need to go through every single object in the game, and I note down, ooh, this should be immune. You know, you should be immune to it if you have a fire shield, ooh. You should be immune to this if you have an electric shield. And so on. we have to do this for every single object. It's not hard, it's just error prone and boring. Like the fire shield will make you immune to lava ball, sure. Lava maker, okay. Water surface? Uh, no, <laughs> sorry, I'm just losing my train of thought. And it's just a really annoying feature to do. I feel like it would be better if I just saved this. Like, I need to do, I need to do some player testing, right? Because I spent like nine hours making this thing, and I still haven't actually done a playthrough. So, at some point, yeah, I'm just gonna have to do a playthrough and note down every little bug, every little issue, and every single thing that I think you should be immune to. Ah, another thing for the to-do list. Um, what if you? I'm still sticking to the idea that a monitor will dish out shields randomly, but it would be pretty cheap if you got a shield underwater and it was one of the electric or fire ones and it just went away, so... Uh, monitors giving you fire... Lightning shields underwater. So that needs addressing too, once we actually add Randomized shield contents again. Man, we got a lot to do, aren't we? <laughs> Jeez. Okay, I suppose we'll do these two because uh, these others are just too hard. So we're going to go back to the shield code and make it, monitor code, and make it spout a random shield. Oh wow, this code is really outdated. Huh. Okay. I guess we're making a jump table. Move up PC DR to the R. Okay, what we've done here is create a jump table. We get a random number. We get a random number. 
between 0 and 4, okay, 0 and 3, whatever, inclusive, exclusive. Use it to get an offset from this table and then jump to it. So, depending on which shield you get, it runs a different bit of code. So, we're going to use this to grant a unique shield, complete with its own sound, complete with its own object, its own graphic, everything. So, I believe it was called Status Fire Shield. Grant him a shield, give him the shield object, or in this case, the fire shield object. I suppose to be safe, we should quickly look at how Sonic 3 grants the fire shield, just in case we're missing something. So, give fire? Here we go. Okay, clears the others, sets the two flags. Is that what I do? Almost. Okay, so we need to clear it. Okay, I have a better solution, there we go, a little arithmetic never hurt anyone. Okay, play the fire, yeah it uses the regular slot, then it checks for two player and grants the object to the right player, grant the object, yeah, I think we're, yeah, I think we're doing fine. And then we just duplicate it for the other two. Oops, gotta get rid of... Nope, come on. Get rid of these two. So we can get rid of this old code now. Okay, well, there we go, we've... Hmm. Yeah, this doesn't look important anymore. Right, so... It is random, but we still haven't accounted for what happens when you're underwater. This shouldn't be hard at all, actually. So, um... I'm just thinking of the most elegant way to handle it. I suppose this is the best way. So we're just going to do a quick test. VTST, I believe 6 is the underwater flag. VPlayer plus status. Oh. Let's stick to the coding convention for once. Ob status. And if so, there we go. Just like that, the shields, the monitor will not give you a fire shield or a lightning shield if you're in the war it will always always give you a bubble shield so let's build it let's pop into labyrinth act one and see if it's true or it can just not assemble that's cool too every time man i hate hard coded branch lens but sometimes you really cannot trust the assembler to do it for you Ah, oh, goody. One of those ones where we can just change it directly instead of creating a trampoline. Alright, see you in Labyrinth. Man, you know, it's been a while since I've been here. I think I was here in part two when I drove myself nuts trying to debug some stupid issue. I've already forgotten what it was. Alright, let's do this. Bubble shield. That could have been luck, but... Come on, I'm anything but lucky. I think it's safe to say that I've addressed the monitor issue. 
Right, that's one more thing off the list. Right, that still leaves with these two though, doesn't it? Immunity, which I can't really do until I do a playthrough. And sound effects. Oh boy. I don't look forward to this one. <sighs> Damn. Okay. Well. I don't even know how I can explain this one to you. You see, it's just a really, really, really deep rooted detail. Jeez. Okay, well, I think this is what we're looking for. I'm quite rusty. But you see, let me uh, get that error back up for you. Does it say in here or anything? Whatever, I'll just open a PowerShell window. So build.bat. Okay, TL bits that do not match its algorithm setting. Let me just uh, visualize this for you. TL bits, voice, all of this. These are FM instruments. The FM being the one of the Mega Drive sound chips, the main one. It's a it's a synthesizer. Okay, and this is an instrument. This is it in its like compacted form. This is it broken down by SMPS to ASM. As you can see, you can specify an algorithm, feedback, layout, whatever. Got unused junk. And here we have total level, the TL bits. Now, again, it's been so long that I can't really tell you. But yeah, total level affects volume or something. So in Sonic 3, and Sonic CD, and Sonic Knuckles, and Sonic 3D Blast, that version of the sound engine, SMPS, the, uh, the total level values speak for themselves. If the sound says 3 and D, it will do 3 and D. But the sound engine used by Sonic 1 and 2, they don't speak for themselves. The algorithm determines the total level. I think, you know, look it up. It's been a long time since I've done this. Either way. So as you can see, we have a table of pre-made total level operators. And it uses the feedback algorithm variable to get this data. And, well, yeah, it's pretty weird. So for comparison, we're going to look at the... Oh, this is... This is going to get real bad. We're going to look at the Sonic 3 sound engine and see how it does it. So these two sound engines, they're related, but they are very distant relatives. Very bloody different. So even just finding this code is going to be a pain in the ass. Hey, come on. Here we go. Send FM instrument, which is the same as um, as uh, set voice. So uh, what is the what are the registers? Okay, maybe I'm maybe these are the registers and it's got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Maybe slot mask. I don't know. Either way. We're going to look for what sets the FM registers 40, 48, 44, etc. Where can I find them? C, 
send TL. That looks good. But yeah, we're getting into like super low level territory, so don't say I didn't warn you. So here's that table. Now, how does it do it? So HL is a pointer to the TL data, alright? It reads a byte. If it's positive, whatever. If it's negative, we add the track's volume to it. We and it. And we send it as a command. Okay. Again, I know this looks like complete witchcraft to you. I've just been doing this for a while. Trust me, it is weird, it's fan. So what does this one do? We get the feedback algorithm, and it, use it to get the slot mask, read it. Aha, here we go again. It checks if it's negative. Oh, and it just gives up. Huh. Okay. Anyway. Here it's over the whole table. Hang on, what the hell am I looking at? This is totally different. Like, let's, let's just come back here. Alright, so this loop this is a for loop essentially. This is the length of the for loop. The length of the table, all four operators. 40, 48, 44, 40 something. So yeah, we get the pointer, read it add the volume, and it, and then upload it. It's way more straightforward, yet we come here. Here's the for loop again. This is the length. We get, yeah, the uh, operator, or whatever. We get the TL data. This is HL in the Z80 code. That's this. Right, we read it. We shift it. Okay, so it is checking if it's positive or negative, just in a really weird way. If it is, you know, we add the volume, and we branch. Branch on overflow. You know? There's... what? Oh, whatever. This is so weird. Include additional attenuation. Branch on overflow. Hang on a tick. That, so that should be... Yeah, a branch on carry set. That's a yeah, that's a that's a disassembly error right there. It doesn't produce invalid code, you know, in the ROM. It just it's wrong to look at because BLO and BCS are the same thing. It's just LO implies it's a comparison of you know SAS, but BCS is a comparison of overflow. Yeah, but as you can see, Sonic 3 doesn't do that, and I suppose that's a bug. It's just a bug in Sonic 3's driver. It does not check if there's overflow. So, okay, okay. So we get the TL, and test it directly. What does this one do? It'll read it, and it'll gladly add the volume to it, and upload it. But this one uses D4, which is FM slot mask, which is feedback algorithm. What's algorithm used for? Nothing. So we can get rid of all of this. We, uh... Wait, did I miss something? How on, that What? Okay, there's there's two of them. There are two copies of the same code. Gross. Really? Come on. So what, what's D4? Feedback algorithm. Okay. D1 isn't used for anything, it gets overwritten, it gets cached, brought up here. Yeah, alright, so. We don't need this. This can go away. And now the syntax highlight is broken, wonderful. So, chop this out. 
instead of D D whatever, we're going to use D1. Now I guess I know 68k assembly better than whoever the hell wrote this sound engine because we don't even need this. We can just do branch if positive. Let's just double check. Yeah. If it's positive, don't add volume. So we branch. We add the volume. If it overflowed, don't do it. And we send it. Now we go to the other one. So we don't need D4, I, I hope. It doesn't look like anything's using it. So we don't need that instruction. We don't need this instruction. What's D5 for? It's a loop counter that hasn't been documented properly. Don't need D4. Don't need that. You can just do PL. Notably, would you look at that? There is no overflow detection. So just like Sonic 3, there is a slight bug. In theory. But now, okay, we've done it. We've converted the game. So this warning is not valid. The TL is not controlled by the algorithm. It's controlled by the TL. So we need to shut up this warning and reconfigure Oh, let's be real. Let's modify. Let's chop up SMPS to ASM so it handles it for us. Okay, down here at the bottom it should be. Oh boy. <laughs> Ooh, alright. If Sonic Driver version is greater than 3, Source Driver is smaller than 3. Oh, this will not work in... Ah, okay. It's the other way around. Okay. If Sonic Driver version is smaller than 3, which it is, we've set it to 1 earlier. If Source Driver is greater than 3, or equal, which it is because that's what the sound is. And then here it compares the total level bits to that permitted by the algorithm. Uh, what's the What's the proper way to do this? This converts Sonic 1 sounds to Sonic 3, where the bits may not match the algorithm, but it will believe the bits anyway. Uh, off the top of my head, I guess you can just remove the warning? I think? Okay, no, 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 no. This is relevant. So, you can port a song from Sonic 1 to Sonic 3 and it'll be buggy, because the bits do not match the algorithm. In Sonic 1, it'll read the algorithm. In Sonic 3, it'll read the TL, but buggy songs have differing algorithms and TLs. So now that we've converted the Sonic 1 driver to read TL instead of algorithm, it's subject to the same bug. Or vulnerable to the same bug. It's not a bug in the driver, it's a bug in the music files or the sound files. So we need to run this code instead of this code. If Sonic driver version is greater than and and... Okay, if Sonic Driver version is 1, which is what this currently is, and the source driver is smaller than 3, it'll correct it. Otherwise... No, we're still going to get errors, aren't we? Hmm. Jeez. I know I get it, I can just chop up the code even further, but I don't really want to. This voice will not work in S1-S2 drivers. Yeah, sorry, I'm just really rusty and I want to make sure I don't make a mistake here. <sighs> if Sonic Drive is smaller than and 
source drive is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, sod it. We're just going to chop up the code. So we don't need this because it's, it's completely irrelevant. We can handle any combination. So that can go away. We don't need this check because we know... Oh, foobar. Okay, one sec. Man, what a headache. <laughs> so technically we could just do this, right, and permanently enforce it. So SMPS to SMPS to ASM will automatically correct um the TL bits to match the algorithm. No we can't, because they differ in Sonic 3. Sod it, jeez. Yeah, it's just there we go. No. No, not even that. There we go. So if the song data, if the FM instrument is coming from the Sonic 1 or 2 sound engine, then correct the TL bits to match the algorithm. If it's a Sonic 3 or whatever sound, leave it be, because it's compatible. So now we should be good. Like I say, it's a really involved edit. So hopefully the game doesn't sound like, well, doesn't sound bad, then we're good. Sorry, I had the emulator running on slow. Yeah, the game sounds good. Um, don't know if you can hear it, I don't really know how well the mic picks this up. But yeah, everything's working correctly, presumably the buggy instruments are being bug fixed by SMPS to ASM to work with the Sonic 3 way of handling TL bits. And if I get an elemental shield it should sound even better than it did earlier. Okay I heard that. Let's try that again. Uh, when was that bug introduced? Anyway. I mean, the uh, yeah, the fire shield sounds good. But why in the world was the sound broken? Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to do a little backpedaling and see if I can replicate the issue and what makes it go away. So I've disabled, I've undone the Sonic 3-ification of the code. Let's see if the issue is still there, even when the sounds are still being converted to Sonic 3 format. Okay, it goes away. Hey, okay, I think I may have screwed up the code somewhere. So I remove the table. Remove that logic and remove DO and D4. Is DO being used? No, it isn't. Is D4 being used? Doesn't look like it. I hope. Alright, get rid of that. Change that. Oh, I'm such a banana. Okay, okay. Let's just fast forward. Yeah, let's go back to Sonic 3. It always, always sends the data, but this jumps over it. All we want to jump over is the volume bit. Yeah, branch and overflow is what skips the right if there's overflow. So, what does that call it? Send TL. Okay.
Right, now hopefully the sound isn't broken. Oh, come on. I am not having a good day. I'm an idiot. Jeez, pancakes, can I please stop? I'm making this so much harder than it needs to be. Alright, take three. Okay, seriously. What am I doing wrong? Oh, f hang on. Wait. How am I not getting errors? Okay, on one hand I'm an idiot, but on the other... Like, that's just a misnomer. Ugh. This isn't funny anymore. I really can't tell you what I'm doing wrong, and that is very annoying. Is that like a second place? This gets used. Oh, it could be the ending that I'm missing out on. Right, why don't I think of that? Anyway, let's just check what this code's up to. TL pointer HL doesn't add, it just ands. Right, whatever. And just put we're back here. Okay. So it doesn't and after the addition, even if you skip the addition. Alright. So I wonder what's quicker, an and or a B clear? I suppose an and is quicker because you can do it like byte wise. Well, actually, no, I think they're both byte wires. Whatever. Not messing anything up, am I? Huh? Better not be. Jeez, this part's long enough as it is, and here I am debugging a stupid typo for 10 minutes. Okay, I'm just... Oh. It's like, you know, the way I'm editing these videos, I can't really pause in hindsight. Seriously, what in the world is the issue here? Am I doing something wrong? Looks fine to me. It applies the masks like it should. <sighs> yeah, that, that looks correct. Mmm, maybe it has to do with the overflow detection. Maybe. Not totally sure. So, let's try it there. Or maybe both. 
Sod it, we're doing both. Right, let's try something else. No more overflow detection. Alright, just a distraction. Okay, so I've just removed the branch on overflow because this is making me very grumpy. Like, come on, I've done this before. Why am I having an issue now? Why? Oh, why is it doing that? I don't get it. I really don't get it. Let's just go back to stage one. Let's just reapply the whole edit because, come on. I don't know if it's that. Anyway, let's just go one bit at a time, okay? Because, you know, sometimes you just have to do these things. When a bug comes out of absolutely nowhere and you don't know what caused it, just reapply your edits bit by bit until you find it. Until, you, until the issue pops back up and then... Then you'll know. So it's that one edit. Yeah, then it just hangs forever. I must be really getting something wrong here, you know. D4. Yeah, it's that thing. If I could find it. Wait, why are we in... What? Okay. So. Yeah, high bit. The two high bits, the three high bits, and then all four bits. Makes sense to me. Then it shifts, and if it doesn't carry, then... Mm-hmm. I am really lost on this one. Like, really? SMPS to ISM takes the algorithm and uses it to manually. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm so stupid! I'm so stupid! Okay, I found the issue. Remember how in the last part I said you didn't have to convert the whole game to SMPS to ISM? You do. Because this doesn't apply, you know, unless the sounds are in SMPS to ASM format. This sucks! Because we have to go through all of this and replace it with ASM files. Please tell me it isn't that bad. Ah, come on. Okay, so S1 original okay good good i'd have to re yeah they have the names okay i think we're gonna be okay Woo! that was stupid so you see this is what i'm talking about you convert it to the sonic 3 way and then suddenly you start noticing bugs in the original sounds and this smps to asm logic has to fix it so okay we're just going to 
replace all of these broken, very broken sound effects with uh, ASM equivalents. And yeah, they're the originals, they aren't improved, they aren't modified at all. I mean, they will be improved, you know, bug fixed by SMPS to ASM, but they haven't been edited otherwise. So now we can remove all the music, because trust me, there will be issues with the music too. Alright. So now, we go through the sound engine, just, yeah, undo our edits for now. Go through and replace all of these buggers. Right, well. Yeah, we'll start here, go down all the way to... Yeah, sort it. All of them. Fuck! <laughs> Damn it! Ugh. Right. Include to bin include and dot bin to dot ASM. Alright, um, hopefully it's as clean of a job as that. And just like that we've converted all of the game's audio to SMPS to ASM. And there's a ROM right there to show that we've done it right, cool. No bug because, um, well, I shouldn't need to explain it. Otherwise, it's working okay. So now we need to go through and apply our edits once again. So let's just get rid of that. Don't need any of this logic. Now isn't that peculiar? Like if the bit's set or whatever, don't add volume. But then later, it's like if it's set. Oh, it isn't a misnomer. I'm just an idiot. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't apply it at all. It's, it could be a bug, but I don't care. Let's just stick to as vanilla behavior as we can get. Again, that should really be carry all set. I mean, carry set. And then the round shift positive. Let me do the same for this one. Don't need you. Do need that. Don't need these. Okay. Oh. Undefined co oh. Man, don't you just love ROM hacking? I sure do. God damn it. Okay, at this point I'm getting desperate, so we're going to try uh, something a little different. We're going to look at the assembled sound data and see if there's any discrepancies, any weirdness. Because I don't know what else to do. <clears throat> so let's figure out which sound is the rolling one. Okay, so it's B E. Right, we're here. Now if we scroll down, here's the voice data. I believe these are the TL bits. So if we come here, 
total level. 28 OD. 28 OD, alright. <clears throat> 28 OD. So these are vanilla. And the algorithm is... 4. Okay. <clears throat> now, if we come back to the sound data, revert it. Here's the table, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is A, alright? And A means algorithm 4 and 3. Ah, uh, they, they, they'd get the high bit. But if we look here, 0 of them have a high bit. So, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, just there. Uh, keep clearing my throat. So we come back to SMPS to ASM. We re-enable this code, and now, yeah, I commented out earlier about debugging. Come here, again, it's D28, when uh, it feels like loading. You know, even on my laptop it was never this slow. The hell's going on? Here we go. <clears throat> D28. Come down here. D28. Come here. Here we go. O D eight O two eight eight O. Oh right, no, it's one and two, not three and four. So Um, so, <laughs> I might have figured out the issue, might, okay, or maybe not, hmm, <clears throat> jeez. Okay, maybe not, but uh, what is A? No, okay, now nah, I'm, I'm just screwing up. This is such an, a pain in the ass. Like A is a bit field, right? So that and that. So we start from here, that's four, that's two, that's three, that's one. Four, two, three, one. Oh, wait, no, it isn't inverted. Either way, see it's backwards, but that's that's normal. So yeah, zero. Oh, what? Nah, I'm, I'm just getting confused. No, it's left to right, jeez. <clears throat> Damn. Okay, so, zero, no high bit. One, high bit. 28, no high bit. One, high bit. So it's doing its job. Its algorithm is four, right? Yeah, it says right there. So algorithm is just sat there with feedback and unused bits sat on top of it. Uh, 21 bytes. No, I don't see any. Okay, one byte. Two byte, three byte, four, five, six, no, wait. Byte one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I lost count. No, 20, 21. So it's definitely pointing to the correct data. So 888, all saying that the final one has the high bit. And you have A, which says two of them get the high bit. I 
I just, I just do not know what I'm doing wrong. Unless it's more that high bit below, and I, jeez, what am I doing? It's just, like, what do we do? We get the TL bit, okay, just got a high bit, then skip, then get rid of the high bit and funnel it to the output, okay. So. So here we are, we have the bit, but we're not going to be using it because I hate its guts. These two are dead, branch if positive. We come here, remove the high bit, and then feed it to the chip. Oh mother f okay, I've been going around in circles, it's like, it's like three issues all at once. So there you go, it was just because the high bit, and then previously it was because the sounds were ASM and jeez louise, how much time have I wasted, come on. I hate programming, I hate it so much. That does still leave the question of um, overflow detection. I can't. What am I supposed to do about that? Sonic Three does not seem to have an overflow check. Jeez, I hate this. Right, so. Don't need that. Don't need. These. That's correct, that's correct, that's also correct. Okay, and now we're here. And we need to get rid of these three. Once again, BPL, once again, BCS. Wow, you know, I never realised how that bug could actually tie into this. Hmm. Whatever, I just, I, I just don't get this overflow check, you know? Maybe, I'll, just to be sure, I'm going to check how Sonic 2 does it. Go through the whole family tree of SMPS engines today, jeez. Right, here's that table. Right, otherwise apply channel volume to TL here. It's not appropriate to all the only ones that are slots. Hmm, fancy that. Must have been a bug fix I added a while ago. How much look at that? What in the Blimey neck? These bug fixes are weird. So Get TL byte, next TL byte. So D is the volume, we add it to C. We clear the high bit to avoid, I don't know, this isn't documented. Then once we've added, we avoid overflow, not by abandoning the right, but merely by clamping the value. But we're not here to fix bugs in Sonic 1's engine, right? <laughs> so.
Okay, I imagine this and this are both related. This is exactly what I was curious about, you know, if we're going to do attenuation overflow and stuff, should we also clear the high bit? Apparently we do. But, man, what a crazy series of issues, all because of one tiny incompatibility between Sonic 3 sounds and Sonic 1 sounds. But yeah. We could implement clamping if we thought it was a good idea, but... Yeah, that's not what I'm here for. So, yeah. That looks correct. Then we go up here to the other one. Oh, I'm in the wrong area, aren't I? Back down, jeez. So if we add the volume and it overflows, we just don't write at all. We don't clamp, we leave. But still, before we add, we remove the high bit. But to be fair, yeah, there is a trick we can do. You've seen BTST, you might see might have seen B set. Have you seen B clear? Maybe. But there's a trick with B clear. It also does a B test. So we're gonna clear the high bit, and then if it was set, so B and E, no, B Q We branch over. So we've killed two bears with one stone. We've cleared the high bit, and we've tested for the high bit. This avoids the overflow issue here, while still doing its job. We then need to and the result. And okay, hopefully it works now. Can we please, please bring this issue to an end? I cannot be asked to debug this for the next three days. Oh, you can do that. Well, um, I hope you stuck around because you will not believe your eyes. I made no mistake. I debugged and debugged and debugged. You see what that is? That right there is an address. I hacked up the code, I hard coded the slot mask, you know, that, that table that's somewhere around here. I hard coded it to the very value the song says it should be. I mean, the sound says it should be. And it, it worked. And then I, I checked the, I checked this, you know, I checked. Zero, one, zero, one. A, zero, one, zero, one. It was correct. There was physically no reason it should not work, okay? And, um, I thought, you know, I knew it couldn't have been me, because why would the code not work? It does exactly what it should. So what's wrong? Well, you scroll up, like here's my code, scroll up. Oh, danger. This uploads the wrong voice. It should have been A5 instead of A6. Now, you might not know what's going on here. But, A5, I guess, is the current sound. A6 points to global RAM. Voice selector indicates what's calling this. If voice selector is zero, it's music. If it's non-zero, if it's like one, it's a sound effect. If it's a negative number... Oh, I'm sorry, maybe it's the other way around. If it's a negative number, it's a sound effect. If it's a positive number that isn't zero, it's a special sound effect. So in the event the game tries to run this with a sound effect, it uses the wrong register reading from global RAM rather than track RAM. And that, that all along was the bug. I'm not kidding. A random bug in the sound driver has sabotaged this damn video for what must be maybe 10, 15, 30 minutes. I'm sorry. I can't really go back and edit it out, you know, I, I don't use a video editor, but oh boy, what a thrill ride, huh? There were ups, there, there were downs, there were instances of me throwing the flipping keyboard, not really, but I wish I, I, wish I were, would have helped get off some of this stress. And uh, yeah, all along, 
blooming engine bug was screwing me over all along. Alright, let's back let's back to your regularly scheduled Sonic hacking video. I cannot believe that happened. So maybe, you know, if you're making a Sonic hack, maybe it really wouldn't hurt to just come in here and just look up the word danger and just fix every stupid little bug. Because I think that's the um, the second time a bug has screwed me over. Remember when the waterfall caused the game to crash? Yeah. And look at, look at all these bugs. So, yeah, let's just get back to making this thing work. So, yeah, we clear the bit, add the volume, chop off any overflow. It really does do that, doesn't it? Hmm. I'm just I'm just torn on what the intended behaviour is. Whatever. Whatever. I just cannot believe that. All that time wasted. Something that won't even my fault. There. <laughs> Fixed. Bloody hell. Alright, you know what? Sad track. I'm fixing the bugs in this driver. I'm so, so miffed after that. Several songs will use the terminal if issues are active. Yeah, but you can't get any, you can't get speed shoes in those levels anywhere. I don't care about the second queue, the game doesn't use it. Screw it. See lead cell no cheat whatever. And uncommon the two lines below. Okay. These don't need to be long sounds, or weird sounds. There's a missing move queue. Yeah. I think I wrote the majority of these bug fixes, you know, these danger warnings. I remember it was one of the proudest moments back when I was a noob in like 2013, when I figured out this bug fix, because the original Sonic 2 clone driver didn't fix it, they kind of hacked around it. Real badly, too. Huh. Don't care. This sounds is all channels, even the ones being used by and not music. Finish music playback. Okay, this is something I wrote a long time ago when I was less... Oh, I never updated that. That's in the wrong syntax for this assembler. Okay. Man, that's stupid. Anyway. Yeah, better initialization. 
I think the thing I just fixed here, like this is whatever, but this I believe causes a bug, question mark, where if you play a sound effect then start a new, s oof, <clears throat> if you play a sound effect and then start a new song, it will corrupt the sound. So yeah, I fixed that. What else? If it doesn't, there's a risk, play noise. All right, let's have it. Let's add a bug fix from Sonic Three. That's cool. All right, cool. And that is all of the standard bug fixes applied. And now you know. And trust me, in just Sonic 1's sound engine that's buggy, heck, I'd argue Sonic 3's is the most buggy. That thing is insane. We've got dead code here, broken code there, be it broken by Sonic Team or broken by the guys who maintain that sound engine. Is there like bugs that date back to a massive internal refactoring of the sound engine over at Sega? Yeah, it's weird. Fire Shield. All that, all that trial and error, all that grief, just to hear the sounds properly. I say, playing the one sound that doesn't use FM. Jeez. Okay. Flippin' heck. Yeah, I really can't believe that. That was stupid. Alright, and that leaves us with one thing. Making you immune to things. Well, we're going to do that in the next part, because this part is how long? I mean, come on, let's take a look. Bloody hell! Okay, two hours, sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are in for a treat. So, in the next part, I'll uh, I'll go play the hack. You just play through the whole thing, find every dumb little bug, every little design design choice I don't like, and make a list of things that you, that you should be made immune to. All right. And. Uh, yeah, so that should be the final part. Not think much else to explain now, is there? So, <laughs> thank you for joining in to this very special extended episode of I Hate Sonic 1 Sound Engine so much. See you next time.